what we're interested in is how does access for different patients uh, vary with the uh, mix of providers that might be in a clinic. So we're looking at both physicians and non-physicians working within the same clinic, uh, where non-physicians are physicians assistants and nurse practitioners. And there's an important literature that dates back several decades uh, that's kind of interested in this idea of how does clinic structure, meaning the number of providers and the different types of providers working together in a clinic influence the number of patients seen and the number of services provided um, over some specified time period to kind of gauge uh, something along the lines of the productivity of the clinic or the efficiency of the clinic. Uh, but there's been little or no emphasis around the production of services for different patient pair combinations. And according to this kind of second and, and other long-standing literature that we're calling upon, uh, that can matter. Uh, and the reason being is because practices are effectively selling their services to multiple markets. Uh, so in the canonical example, we have the uh, high-priced privately insured market and then the low-priced uh, Medicaid market. Um, and so with this in mind, uh, then we start to kind of think about uh, as non-physicians and physicians being, uh, or their labor being substitutes uh, for each other in the tasks that, that are going on in a clinic. Um, and so long as human capital is expensive, uh, we might think uh, that clinics are able to substitute more non-physician labor for physician labor, uh, might also have an easier time uh, delivering like a lower cost care. And so on the margin, uh, this can matter the most for the Medicaid patients because, again, that's the, the lower price uh, um, segment of the market. Um, and so uh, and that's associated with the lower reimbursement price. Uh, but scope of practice legislation that kind of uh, regulates more or less what different providers can do in the clinic uh, kind of throws a wrinkle into all this. Uh, so it can either alter, uh, if not completely shut down, uh, the amount of substitution that could be going on within the clinic between these different provider types. Uh, if that is the case, then we might think it's actually less likely uh, that the marginal Medicaid caller uh, is able to get an appointment because the price associated with that caller may not be enough to cover the marginal cost of care. Um, so this gives us a few things that we can play around with in the data. And to do that, we're using the audit study, uh, which Karen uh, just told you uh, quite a bit about. Uh, it's going on here at Penn. Uh, it's a very exciting and very interesting data set. Um, and we're really kind of going at the data in, in three broad ways. Um, so the, and, I don't know why I have the number one three times. Imagine one of them is two, the other is a three. Um, I'm a Mac user, what do you think? I don't know. Um, but so, so number 1.1 1 .1 is, is, is the main uh, kind of thrust of the paper where we're just modeling uh, differential appointment rates between our privately insured callers and our Medicaid callers and seeing how does this vary with the number of non-physicians in the clinic and then again stratifying the sample by scope of practice legislation because uh, we kind of left out uh, the 10 states that Karen selected have really nice variation in these policy environments. Um, and then in the 1.2, um, we're, we're uh, kind of going at the subset of clinics uh, in the audit study. They actually received a call from a Medicaid and privately insured caller to the same clinic. Uh, so they kind of have like a paired call. And the reason we're doing this is because of, as Karen described, uh, the Medicaid calls were, were tailored toward clinics that already indicated that they're part of like a Medicaid managed care plan or in some way kind of tilted uh, toward, toward the Medicaid group. And so we want to make sure that what we're seeing in kind of the core part of our paper, does it kind of generalize this subset of clinic that's already uh, shifted a little bit more toward Medicaid access. And then in 1.3, uh, we're taking advantage of what we think is a really neat feature of the audit data that Karen described is the fact that conditional on a self-payer uninsured called a getting an appointment uh, then they ask, you know, how much am I going to have to pay to actually be seen? And so this gives us some kind of measure of price of what that visit uh, uh, could cost. Um, I have bad news. Uh, so the, the thrust of the paper at making those results into a picture is a little bit tricky. Uh, so you're going to have to take my word that they're really nice results. Uh, but for the out outcome 1.2 and 1.3, we can do a little bit better. Uh, so we're just taking uh, the regression models that we estimate, and we're doing some post-estimation predictions that we can then show uh, graphically. Um, so on the, the left cluster of bars, we have what we're calling like our favorable scope of practice states. So these are states where the regulations essentially let uh, the non-physician providers kind of you know, do the full gamut of tasks uh, within a primary care setting. And then on the right, we have our, our cluster of states that have more uh, restrictive regulations uh, that allow less uh, non-physician involvement or require a more kind of joint provision of care. Um, and so this is again looking at the outcome at the, like the within clinic analysis to see the, the difference between private and Medicaid calls 
to the same clinic, uh, we see this really dramatic decline uh, on the favorable scope of practice side of things. So this is essentially telling us that the more non-physicians uh, that are on staff there, the less likely it is that there's going to be a difference uh, between these two calls at a clinic. We don't really see a comparable uh, pattern in the more restrictive uh, regulation environments. Um, and even the, the shallow decline that we have, uh, none of it's statistically significant. When we go to the price, because things are flashing yellow, uh, we see a very, a very similar picture, right? So the more non-physician clinics that are on staff, uh, the lower the price uh, of the primary care visit. But again, this is conditional on being in this more accommodating regulatory environment. Uh, over in the restrictive states, we see essentially no relationship between non-physicians on staff and the price of services. Uh, we're going to write the paper, we're going to submit the paper, we're going to present the paper, and we're excited about stuff to come. Thank <laughs> you.